Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, July 11th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. here at Sands Fire. Well, Apple today had a surprise for us. Uh, this is in the form of a rapid security update. These are these smaller but urgent updates that Apple publishes that do not require a system or reboot, but that patch currently exploited vulnerabilities. Apple published a total of three different vulnerabilities. Two of them are WebKit remote code execution vulnerabilities. So visiting a malicious web page may be triggering these vulnerabilities. This, of course, again, gives you access to the Safari sandbox. The third one then is the typical privilege escalation vulnerability that allows you to break out of the sandbox. One of the two code execution vulnerabilities is only being exploited against iOS released before iOS 15.7. As a result, it's also only patched for 15.7. The other remote code execution vulnerability is patched for current versions of iOS, the older version of iOS, as well as macOS Ventura. Older versions of macOS do not receive this patch. Uh, not clear if that's because they're not vulnerable. The privilege escalation vulnerability, it is patched across all the operating systems, including watchOS. So the remote code execution vulnerabilities, well, they're WebKit. Uh, they don't affect watchOS, only the kernel part that's actually the privilege escalation vulnerability. So given that these vulnerabilities are actively being exploited, the patch is relatively easy to install. I would recommend, well, uh, do it now if you haven't already installed these updates. Well, if you are using Ubiquiti's Edge Router or Aircube, you want to double check your uh, firmware version. On June 29th, uh, Ubiquiti did release an update for these products. It fixes a remote code execution vulnerability in the mini UPnP daemon. A little bit later, and uh, didn't really notice this until today because it has sort of gotten more press the last couple of days. This is the advisory released a blog post with additional details, including a proof of concept exploit. This is not a super severe vulnerability. It does require that the exploit is sent from inside the network. So there's nothing where someone would easily scan the internet and uh, take down uh, these uh, systems. But uh, definitely something that you do want to double check that uh, your firmware is updated. I don't have any experience with these particular products from Ubiquiti. Many of the Ubiquiti product products are pretty good in sort of doing auto updates, but uh, either way, double check and remember that idea of perimeter day where once a month you're sort of checking if all of your perimeter security devices like uh, these routers and such are up to date. And last week, Mozilla released Firefox 115, and with that included a feature that apparently is ruffling some feathers. The issue here is that uh, Mozilla did include a feature they're calling quarantined domains. And what this really refers to is, well, there's nothing wrong with the domains. It's actually about extensions, where Mozilla will block some extensions from working if you're visiting these specific domains. The reason behind this is that Mozilla found that some malicious extensions are targeting specific websites. So if you have one of these potentially malicious extensions installed and you're visiting a website targeted by this extension, then, well, the extension is being blocked from actually working. What's ruffling some feathers here is, first of all, the user interface is not quite that clear to indicate that an extension is blocked and also the entire process, which particular extensions are being affected by this and on which websites are they not working and why? Well, uh, this hasn't really been made 
quite a transparent uh, by Mozilla. So it's one of those, well, trust us features where they're basically enabling, disabling some of the extensions that you have installed. And you at least right now don't have a lot of control over this. Apparently the next version of Firefox 116 is supposed to give you a bit more transparency here and also more control over how this feature will exactly work. Right now, you're of course still able to just turn it off globally. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tuesday, We'll also have the Internet Storm Center keynote here at Sands Fire. I'll put a link in the show note in case someone will be listening. This keynote will be available as a webcast simultaneously to the actual live keynote here in DC. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.